snake bits. All right, Hello, guys. everybody. Hey, this... everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually going to be doing a bit of an analysis of the first dungeon that was uh, done for me in New World. Uh, anyone who saw my video on New World, uh, we were going to do the expedition, the Amorite uh, excavation, but we didn't get a group for it, so... Now, uh, off camera later on, I, well, not off camera, I ended up recording it later on. And, uh, here it is. This is, uh, a bit of a, I mean, it's my first dungeon. Uh, I got into a group pretty easily, by the way. I told them I was a healer. Uh, I am, though. I actually have a life staff and it's leveled up a bit, but I told them I was a healer. I said, looking for group healer and immediately got invited. So, you know, get them healer boys in there. We need more healers in this game, clearly, more tanks as well. Um, but yeah, so, walking right into the dungeon, it's pretty interesting. Uh, you know, I don't know what to talk about really with it until we get to the bosses necessarily, but I'll Sorry. notice that it looks very good. The layout of the dungeon seems to be very big. Um, they really went for like a massive scale with it. Like, it looks as if it would be an actual... What it would look like if you were in an actual like excavation like a mine or something right that's so that's one of the first things i noticed is it calls it something not a dungeon yeah they call them expeditions i, I don't know why the difference in name um i, I guess they just kind of want to separate themselves from other mmos right now like because they're new and they want to do that they're a new world yeah new world so uh yeah um i don't know what to talk about for a little bit actually. so like all right it looks like combat starts right inside the dungeon pretty much yeah yeah it really does it jumps right into it um there's not really a moment where we're not killing something i'll say like for the whole dungeon there was combat going on constantly uh running from you're basically running between content like between murder fest uh many types of enemies in here as well like it, it kind of gets very it gets very uh varied later on um right now we're just fighting like you know basic like uh ghoul looking like creatures and let me mute my phone <laughs> um so we're you know fighting ghoul creatures fighting you know these uh, abomination looking things they're like winged bat things i don't really know what they're called they're you just see them a lot in the world around right and, um, yeah, so you're fighting these, and then, you know, it just starts spreading out. Like, you start seeing ghosts later, you start seeing, like, these, like, just really weird creatures. Uh, I'll say that New World has a very weird, like, way of making enemies. They look strange and look kind of horrific in the way that they're, like, juxtaposed to some of the beautiful scenery. So in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the beginning of it, it looked like there was a list of items or there was a list of like requirements to enter. Yeah, so you actually needed an Azoth staff. At least one of your party members, it's required to do the dungeon that you have at least one of them. Uh, as well as you require a, what was it? You require a... Um, was it some kind of stone? Yeah, a tuning stone or something like that. And you require one of those to even get in. So you have to actually have like a key. There's a key system in the dungeons, which is uh, something back from like a really old MMO style with that. You know, like EverQuest or WoW, where you used to need the, the key itself yeah. to get in. Or, you know, do some attunement process with it. It also required three players, and you'll see why later, but the gist of it is, is that uh, there are a lot of things in here that are like, trap trap uh floor panels and stuff like that you need to stand on three people are required for you to even even you know go past it um because you can't have you know yourself stand three places so you know that kind of makes things a little weird i think uh especially if you were like over leveled and you just wanted to grab some gear out of here you have to have three people but then again it is an mmo as we've talked about before an mmo should require more than just one person to do most content yeah, I was I was actually going to bring that up. I think it's interesting that it requires you to have a certain number of people because most MMOs cater somewhat to solo play. 
Yeah, um, yeah, they do. Whenever you get a quest that says group in this game, it really does mean group. I mean, you might be able to get around it if you're really good. I've done a couple things that are, I think they, they were flagged as group quests, but I've done them on my own. Um, but even still, they were much more difficult. And typically, I would even have to wait, I guess, until someone came around. So not only was I, I wasn't doing them solo, really. Um, they really like to give you quests that are, that are difficult for one individual, too difficult for one individual. So the first boss is actually what you're seeing right now. Uh, it was just like a basic ghost kind of enemy. It wasn't really much on the first, like the first one didn't have any mechanics. Now you'll see later on the mechanics get a lot more deep. Uh, we've watched this over uh, already. And, you know, the mechanics themselves aren't hard. They're just punishing. Yeah. This is one of the first dungeons though. They really like to punish the punish you for like, you know, messing it up. Don't mess up anything. You don't want to be the guy... Uh, the healer especially, or the, you know, DPS and getting your ass beat. Uh, these mechanics will kill you. I think it's good for a game to, like, if you shouldn't be here, the game should tell you that you shouldn't be here, and it should be in a very punishing way. That's my opinion. But see right like, there, that's how games used to be. That Azoth door, it required the uh, staff to open it. That's where it was. So okay. you can... I guess if you don't have the staff, you can kill the first boss, but you can't get past that. Um, and then from there, you can actually get pretty far in before you require anything else. But they do require, like, each stage of it requires someone to do something within, like, something you would gather outside of it. Right. Which is, you know, like I said before, an older MMO thing where you basically have to get things before yeah. you can do it. Um things that are directly tied to it aren't always in the instance itself they're like spread around the zone or like without with in crafting or whatever and uh so this is like a little bit of a <coughs> so this is a little bit of a like a, a tutorial like thing in the, in a way they teach you a couple different like they teach you a couple different enemies like really quickly um and it's important because some of the bosses later will be that type of enemy. So, that's, you know, you gotta know it before you can really do it. Right. Um, and the enemies themselves, like the bosses are typically just scaled up of the enemies. Most of the time. Right. Now, right there, you saw me trying to put that heal down. Um, the reason for like that, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with the way it works, but I get better at it later. They have a cycle system. So, whenever I press a heal, you'll see... Like, whenever I'm on the side here, it'll highlight their name, and that's who I'm going to heal. Um, I don't... It's a little different than, like, Elder Scrolls Online, where you kind of just hit the heal button, and whoever's in front of you, or you look at the person you're going to hit with it. Right. Um, and it even works for your big AoE one. So that big circle I put on the ground, that heal, yeah. uh, it also has a lock-on function. You can also press Control... Where I think is the default one, or it is for me. You press control, and it'll automatically hit you. Any oh, spell. So you can, okay. yeah, you can automatically heal yourself or do any of those functions on you. Uh, or you can click your mouse down, your mouse, like your middle mouse button, yeah. click it down, and that will free it up where you can free look with it and put it wherever. So there you go. There's another Azoth thing, uh, I believe. You need to use another one of the stabs, I think, here. I can't quite... So, I don't know a lot of these uh, traps and how they work yet. Uh, I only did the dungeon once, right? Right. Uh, but I had a full group of people who clearly knew what they were doing with the traps, or at least knew about, like, where to go with the traps and what to do, like, the gist of it. Right. I had no idea what the traps were yet, uh, or where, the, like, how to do them, how to open doors and whatnot yet. But, you know, I, I kind of learned quickly. That's the thing with this game. You have to learn quickly, especially when moving into new zones or new areas with new types of things to fight. Yeah. Uh, you'll get caught off guard very quickly if you don't know the mechanic. And the first time you do it, you're not going to know it. So you're probably going to get your ass kicked, and then you got to learn from there. Yeah. The game really teaches you in that way. Like, get your ass kicked first, and then you'll know. See, there you go. I'm healing guy up on stairs, and then I go back and, and start hitting 
because uh, we have two people fighting. We have people up on the top fighting, and we have people down here fighting. So we have split the party, essentially, two and two. Yeah. And I'm standing in the middle as the healer trying to do both. I think it's interesting. It's, it's a five-person group. So that's actually been the standard for most MMOs for a long time. ESO is the only one I know of that doesn't do that. Uh, they, do, they do the four-man groups. Yeah. Um, I know that's like the standard. I'm kind of surprised they're continuing that standard. You know, I know that they're doing a lot of old MMO things uh, within this game. They're trying to replicate in a new way the old like MMO philosophy. Um, and I like that. I like that they're doing that. But I, it is kind of strange. I feel like smaller groups would probably work better. Even though I do like big groups. I mean, there are 50 v 50 stuff in here. And, and even, you know, big raids with giant, some giant amount of people in them. I like that content, but it does become very difficult to organize groups. That's why WoW itself stopped having 40-man raid groups. Yeah. Um, people actually complained about it. They said, we can't find 40 people to raid. We can't... It's hard to manage 40 people to raid. It's hard to do this and that, you know, because... Think about it in Elder Scrolls Online, you know, you're trying to organize your group, you got all your gear sets, everything worked out, right? And everyone's worked out, you know, and you know the people, you know what they're wearing. But imagine that with 40 people. It's right. a lot more difficult to keep track of what everyone's wearing, what everyone's doing, when in reality it could just be, it could just be, you know, your fucking healers wearing DPS gear. <laughs> like, you know. Right, right. You, you can't keep track of all of it with a 40-man raid group. Uh, I think that's okay, though. I, I like that because, you know, it, it kind of becomes like an honor system like it was on the older games where you kind of just had to trust your buddies. What are you doing here? So, this mine actually has things you can mine in it. So, earlier a guy uh. earlier a guy got the silver from me. I was wanting that, but yeah. he got the silver. Uh, but I saw a, a soul spike, so I grabbed that. That has soul, um, soul conduit, soul something. I can't remember the name of it. They have soul energy things that come out of them, and they're good for crafting. Uh, used in a lot of different crafting things. It's kind of strange, because a lot of the same crafting things come from... So, like, if you wanted to craft armor or whatever, you don't just make plate out of armor, like metal. You also right. have to use cloth, cloth to make the underpart. Right. So it becomes a whole thing. Like, rings and stuff, they require three parts. <laughs> Uh, not only do you need the gym, but you need like the socket to put the gym in, right. and then you also need the band of the ring. That's interesting. Yeah, they really did try to like make a, a whole overarching system with it, and I, I like that. I think that's a fun mechanic there. Uh, we also have a couple other people in here using life staffs as well, which isn't an issue in this game because you can throw any kind of weapon on your back bar, and even if you're not talented for it, you can you know make some use out of it, especially a life staff. Because it doesn't require mana to shoot with it. So, you know, even though it might not be your best weapon, you can do that and even have it heal. Right. When you when you use light attacks. So, you know, you can, you can really become like a more uh, universal character by just adding in extra things to your character, using different weapons. A lot of these guys are using different weapons. All of them are using something different. Um... You know, we got a guy here with a musket and a life staff. I'm using a uh, ice gauntlet. We got a guy with a hammer. We got a guy with a shield. Like, you know, we got a couple guys with shields on, actually. And, uh, you know, that guy right there, that two-handed hammer, I mean, that thing does work. Yeah. He's When he smacks something, it, it really smacks. And uh, I, it does a lot of build diversity here. I'm seeing a lot of things where people are just playing what they want to play, not what they, like, feel they have to play. You know, you see, you see a lot of different builds in this uh, in this game, like just throughout the world. Uh, no one really seems to want to use the same kind of situation, and even with the abilities they use, they're all using different abilities. Yeah. yeah I mean, me and this guy have the same uh, AOE ground heal, but I think he has different things for his life staff than I do. So that is supposed to be one of the big selling points of this game is you're not locked into class abilities and stuff like that like you're free to <clears throat> build a build like your character however you want your character built yeah you can really work around with the class system uh i i had found out uh i didn't know this when i was first playing that because i've never looked anything up about it but 
you know, the game itself. I'm just playing it, playing it more relaxed. Like, I don't, I don't want to read anything until I hit max level, right? Right. Um, but, you know, I've been playing around, and um, I didn't play the beta. I didn't do anything like that. So this is like, I'm really going in blind. Right. But I found out that uh, you can actually take abilities from both skill trees um, and use them. I thought that the skill trees were locked. Right. And that you can only use the three out of the skill tree that you picked into. I didn't realize you could do you could do both. And when I found out that, I started mixing and matching my uh, abilities to be from both. That's why I'm using Ice Pylon uh, and putting down... Yeah, there you go, Ice Pylon. And also using, like, you know, Ray of Frost and the big AoE one that uh, puts yeah. things... You know, put the big fucking circle on the ground of Frost. <laughs> right. Which, I like that Frost does a lot of chip damage. It's slow damage, but it, like, continuously enwraps. Uh, very, very different weapons. Each weapon is very different, and they all bring utility to the fights. Like, especially in this dungeon itself. Um... I can't imagine what it'd be like if we didn't have a guy with an extra life staff, even as the healer. Right. I mean, like, you know, it's just nice to have that. It's nice to know someone else can pick up a little bit here and there. And that's how we are in ESO, of course. You know, most people, like, you know, they don't just build a DPSer. They build a character that can work in more, more than just one area. Right. So right here, that guy ended up dying. Uh, he fell off the edge, I believe. And so he kind of left me with this thing to fight. And I'm trying to run away from it because it hurts. Like, it is a damage. Yeah, I can see your health getting beat on there. Yeah, so I go pretty low That's here. Intense. I eat some food, uh, drink some potions, and I just start rolling. And I'm trying to see, I'm trying to figure out a way to get back up with my group. Because I don't know exactly where they are and I don't know how to get around to them. So I'm just going to have to, so I've determined that I'm just going to run back. I'm going to run full on back. And maybe I'll catch up with him. Uh, maybe the guy who died will come back around, realize that, you know, I've yeah. been left behind a bit. And here he is. You know, he came back and he's going to help kill it all. This thing was really ripping me a new one. I was not able to fight this one on my own. I'm under level, as I'm sure you guys can see. I'm level 22 in a level 25 dungeon. But, geez, that thing was hard hitting. Yeah. Uh, H hit was was definitely scary and I was already low health so it was not a good situation for me well it's kind of that it's that concept that I was talking about at the beginning like if you don't belong here or you're not you're not ready yeah if you're not ready for the content like if your character's not ready for the content it's gonna get you're gonna get punished a little bit which makes I think makes sense like it always felt like it made sense in the games where it existed before Oh yeah, I mean, you know, games are for fun, but a lot of the fun comes into a challenge. I mean, yeah. you know, we were having an issue with March of Sacrifices today, but like, <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like, he, yeah. that's, that's the thing. March is that, of Sacrifices is an issue. Yeah, it was veteran as well, and, <laughs> and we, were, we were really getting our ass pummeled a bit, and, and that's just part of the fun of it, you know. The challenge itself is sometimes what's more rewarding than even the the things you get out of it. The gear itself could be whatever. Uh, sometimes just beating it is the is what you need. You need to you know you need to beat it. You gotta you feel that in you, where even though you're getting pummeled down, like it's just it's right there. You know if I can kill this boss, if I can do this, if I can get past this part. Uh, you know, something that was it's been gone from a lot of games nowadays because it's just more easy in general, is the the fact that you, you you might just struggle to get nothing. Yeah, it's so like all right. So <clears throat> I stepped out for a second and I'm back, but I heard you talking about getting like beat on. Sometimes that's what you need. So like, what it? I think maybe that's the reason that I agree with getting punished in in for being in like. It's, so, number one, it stops you from just racing through a game. Like, yeah, it, it does. It stops you from doing that. Because if you're not leveled, if you're not geared, if you didn't do all the shit you should have done, you're not going to be okay wherever you're at, right? Right, no, and so you shouldn't be. So, it makes be. you stop and rethink. Like, March, so, March of Sacrifices, like, before I stepped out is what we were talking about. Yeah. That dungeon's hard. Like, it's hard on its own. Oh, and yeah. And you go into a hard mode, 
and like you'll find out if you if you should be there or not. Yeah. You'll find out by the first boss. And and some of the fun in that or some of like what I agree with in that is this. Most other content doesn't just like we can walk into pretty much whatever. Like we did a bunch of veteran dungeons today and didn't like I don't even think anybody died in them. No, uh, we didn't have anyone die for at least one or two of them. I know that because we got the achievement for one of them we hadn't been in in a yeah. while. Um, so, like, most content yeah. doesn't kill your character, then what's where are you going to get a reality check from? Yeah, you know, there is a place for hard content. Elder Scrolls Online clearly has found that out because they've made the adjustments to make DLC dungeons very, like, much more difficult oh, God, than they yeah. were before. Like when the game was, uh, when it first came out in 2014, the game's content is just not up to snuff with what we're used to now. Um, but now, like all their DLC stuff comes out and it's hard. Uh, but this game is just naturally hard. So I like to see where it goes like further with it. I mean, I think the best I think thing- I that's a good thing. Like, yeah. I, like, got, I yeah. got worried earlier this week. I'll bring, uh, so this is about this game. Earlier this week, I saw something on is New World, can you still solo play, or can you solo play New, New World? Right. And, like, while I don't disagree with being able to solo, like, certain parts of an MMO, an MMO is what it is. Like, it's a massive right. multiplayer game. You know? So right there, by the way, I just want to point out, that's a checkpoint in the dungeon. That's... That's good stuff. Like, I like that. Because that tells you right up... Like, when you run through that, you should go, shit, we're yeah. going to be in here for a minute. So what happens is that you, whenever you die now, you can either go to the entrance or you can go yeah. to the checkpoint. And that is just a good, like... That is a, hey, you made it through one-third of the dungeon. Mm -hmm. Don't fuck it up now. And see, that's interesting because, like... And right here, I Indiana Jones thing. myself away... This right here, I'm getting chased by a creature I know I can't fight. Uh, I'm trying to lead it back up here, and I'm Indiana Jonesing, you know, sprinting through. Feel like I'm. <laughs> oh, is this the? Yeah, is this the Minotaur. Yeah, that's where we're all getting our asses kind of kicked a bit. Right here is see, because I went over there and did the mechanic, and I didn't realize I've never been here. So now we already got a guy down, and I'm healer, ah. so I'm worried, and then I die. And this happens a couple times, actually. So, what happened is, so what happens is we we try to revive, um, and we revive right back where we were, and all they're, they're still there, and we get our ass handed to us a couple times. We end up having to just reset all of it before we can go over to the cross the bridge and fight it. Uh, I mean, it was improper pulling. That's what it is. We improperly pulled it, and yeah. because of that, we got our ass kicked. I mean, the healer is. You know, a million miles away, standing on a trap door, having to getting ran out by a, you know, what a fucking minotaur. Yeah. The other guy is downstairs to the left, and he's standing on it. And you got one guy up here standing, and it's like, uh, we kind of spread out the wrong people, I think. And I think we also had an issue where we just didn't have the ability to group it all back up together. Uh, we just didn't have the pool to do it all. Which is like, that's our lesson. But we got the checkpoint, so we were able to spawn back. Now, that did get us killed a couple more times. But, right. like, we probably should have just waited. And you see there, I got hit. And if you're already down and you get hit, you're dead. Gotcha. That's a, you can revive, but, you know. Oh, yeah, right back in it. Yep. And I I healed the guy. I try. I should have probably just let him die. Uh, so, you know, I, I know that sounds bad, but I probably should have. Because then we could have reset the boss fight, but healer's oath, I guess. I don't know. I was like, all right, I'm going to heal him because I'm a healer. Uh, and it did not pay off well for me. Uh, so I started running back because I figured, you know, we're kind of fucked and we should probably pull back and I just yeah. died. And I so saying you probably shouldn't have healed him, I don't think that sounds bad. Like, I think playing, a, like, I think if you play a role enough, you get stuck in the, because like, when we play, when we play, I'm the tank, so I take the hit, or you know, do whatever like I should be doing at the time. Yeah. And sometimes that's not the right thing, you know. Right. 
And that right there, that's why I let us die. Right there. I, I saw him. I said, alright, look, we're just gonna die. And they were talking in chat about it. Like, the guy said, rip. <laughs> and, uh, that's kind of funny. Like, yeah, man, we kind of got our ass handed to us, alright? Like, R.I.P. We're done for. These guys were actually pretty jovial about it. We laughed about a lot of things. Like, we didn't, you know... It wasn't, like, taken so super seriously as I thought it would be with New World having so many mechanics, like, heavily focused in. Yeah. There's not a lot of people who are, like, super toxic that I've ran into. Yeah, there's people that, like, steal your gear or steal your shit, like, while you're trying to do it. I'm part of it. But, you know, like, there's those people. But, and then you got a few people that are like, you know, ah, oh, you guys fucking suck. But, like, even still, like, most of the time... I haven't ran into anyone who's like super toxic or or like pissing me off or nothing like most of the time people just kind of get it and they just go like it's not a big deal you just pick yourself up and go yeah uh maybe just because we're low level it may just be because we really wanted to get this dungeon done i don't know but you know there wasn't really all this toxicity that you would that you would expect from a really mechanic heavy game where people are like focused on being the best and stuff like you kind of just you kind of just get used to it. The yeah. game the game treats you bad like from level one. Like you're gonna get your ass kicked. Get ready, and I think that helps. Like, well, you know, think about it. People aren't as big of assholes whenever they've had to learn humility. Right. And I think that's part of it. Is that you you kind of learn a bit of humility from the game by getting your ass kicked. Yeah. So that that go, that's that's probably like. Or not, not probably. That is part of where I'm coming from. When like I think, when I say I think, if you shouldn't be here, like you should get punished for being here, a little bit. Like, oh yeah, yeah. I agree. If not a lot. You know, like you're this... not. You got to put time in your character in the game. Like even if you are good at what you do, you still got to put some time in. Like, and that's how it should be. You know, like games are an investment of time, and I understand that they're like not the biggest thing in the world right like they're just games you just play a game but you should expect that you want to get the content done and i think that's where you know i'm really coming in on it where it's like people want to play with good players or players that are within their same skill level if you're not playing with people of the same skill level as you or better like then you're not going to be progressing no. you're not going to get better at the game you're not going to get farther in you're not going to you know, do the things you'd want to do. Uh, right. You gotta play with people of your own skill level. If your skill level is dudes who go around and do quests in the zone all day, and that's not like, that's the hardest content you can do, find a group and a guild that will do that with you. Absolutely. Like, there, there's a place for people who aren't the fucking elite, like players, obviously. But, you know, the thing is that the places that are there for the people who want to go hardcore should be left untouched for those people. I agree with that 100%. You know, and I, I like this, because this game, you can you can find friends, you can find groups that want to do all kinds of different things. You know, I'm sure trading guilds and trading groups will become a thing soon, and, and that's something that is, you know, enforced by the game itself and how it plays. So, I like to see that. I'd like to see more uh, communities, like, start to, you know, branch up in this game. It's a fun game. It has a lot of deep mechanics that are still need to be ironed out probably here and there. I won't lie. You know, the game's new. Uh, there's going to be a lot like, you know, even the testing phase isn't really testing it because you can't really test it to the mass scale as you can here when the game's live and everyone's playing it and you get a bunch of feedback. So yeah. I think the game will only get better from here or at least I hope it will. Yeah, when you open it up to the public and then you have people in mass like crawling every like inch of every corner of the game and you're gonna get <clears throat> much deeper feedback oh yeah and like, you know you know i think that this game has a place for the hardcore as well as the people who just want to play a harder game i don't think this game is for the people who don't want a game that's a bit more difficult like, you gotta, you have to aim your spells. You can see me even missing spells. But you have to aim them manually. You know, there's not really, like, the auto-lock for, like, your abilities is there. But even still, like, if you, you gotta learn things. You gotta learn how to, you know, aim and how to 
fight, uh, even though it's a more basic system within it. You gotta learn it. Um, so someone who's just wanted to casually play, I don't know of New Worlds for those kind of people. Not to say that they can't play it, it's just that I don't know if you're gonna have as much of a fun time in it unless you're really wanting to invest large amounts of time in it. Yeah. Well, I, the time investment is what makes games so serious for people. Like, when you... There are Dungeons and Dragons campaigns that go on for years. Absolutely. Like, yeah. And that's... It's not that the game itself is serious. It's that, alright, like, we're gonna spend... You go into it knowing you're not gonna spend a small amount of time doing it. And it might end up a couple of years. Like... Right. That right. might be a thing, you know. And it's no... It's really no different anywhere else that somebody is playing a game. Like, they put... That is... I don't want to excuse it, but that's probably what causes some of the like toxic toxicity around like the lower level of like the upper echelon of players. Yeah, because they're like, all right, I finally got here and I'm fucking badass, but they're really not yet because like they haven't got to that end game, like truly end game shit. Well, yeah, there is a large group of people. That I'd say a, I'd say they're a minority. I would hope they are, but it's what I'm saying by that is that there's a large amount of people good enough amount of people of higher end players who are not at the high end they are basically like they're good players but they don't get along with other people or they have an issue with other like whatever yeah and uh because of that they don't get groups they don't get into massive like you know content and oh, this is that fucking ghost thing this is the ghost thing yeah this boss is horrible Right here, I mess up. Um, the UI in this game's not very great, if I'm honest. Um, but nonetheless, like I got him up, and we were going on. This boss is horrible, though. Uh, Mechanic-wise, it's simple. But the thing that scares me about it is when he puts this... You'll see it whenever he puts this big pink circle around. Um, and that's basically a, a marker saying, Don't fucking be here or you're dead. Yeah. Uh, right there, I dodge rolled in between two of them because I had to move away from that shit. Yeah. And but like we were saying though, like you know, there's a large amount of people who are good enough to be raiders or guild, like, you know, guild leaders, whatever, but they just don't take the extra um, incentive to be a good, like, friendly player. And uh, here's where I die. Uh, yeah. Uh. I get picked up. That was horrible. Um. But yeah, you know, that's part of it, is that this game definitely has a, I think it has what it takes to be a place for the hardcore gamer, as well as the casual player. Yeah. I just don't know how much the casual player will get out of it. Yeah. That's that's really what it is, because it takes a large amount of time to get invested in the mechanics and systems that go on in this game. I That's, that's part of it, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm playing it pretty casually myself, even though I play for 10 hours, but <laughs> I call that casual. I mean, then again, uh, it's probably why I have a YouTube channel and not a real job, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's this boss here is just something special though. I'll tell you that. Like you really don't want to be around that shit. Yeah. And these ghosts do good damage. Like they hurt. And I'm probably standing in the wrong place on a, on the stairs. Like, stairs are not a good place to be 90% of the time. Um, and then there he is. He's waving out these, like, massive amounts of ghosts that come out. I'll tell you, like, the boss itself hurts. Uh, and the mechanics of it are probably the most dangerous. So here I get hit. And as soon as I got hit, I dodge rolled. Yeah. It interrupted that stun that I got from it. And I was like, I'm getting out of there now. Yeah. Uh, I'm not fucking with that. And, uh, yeah, so we go forward. I mean, it's really, you know, like, that's how this game is. A lot of people operate like this. It's like, it's just, in this game, you just go forward. You got the thing done, you go forward. You pick up the supply stockpile. There's typically gear and stuff in them. Uh, like, they're strong mana potions. Those come into handy, and come in handy later. Uh, when I burn through all my mana potions. Oh, man. Yeah. The last boss gave us a lot of hell, and we actually ended up losing one of the guys. I don't know uh, exactly why, but we, you know, we ended up calling in... One of these guys knows another guy who's like level 36, 38, or something like that. And uh, he comes in and helps. And even still, the boss was hard. I, that's, that's 
something of a testament, I would say. Yeah, like, do you, all right, so I gotta ask this, because I'm thinking about it now, does, do you notice, like, does the content scale to you? Does it scale? There's no, like no scaling. Okay, so it's just level 25, everything in is here. Level 25, level 26, yeah. Okay. I think the last boss is 26, I think he might actually be 25, though, I don't know. I know that everything in here up to this point right now, what we're looking at, is 25. Right, so like if you come back to this <laughs> later when you're like level 60, it should still play exactly, but like it won't be hard. Like the things in here won't be like... They brutal. won't, I imagine they won't be hard that much. I know that if, a le if an almost level 40 character, like halfway to level 40, 40 through 30, uh, can come in here, and not just become god automatically mm -hmm. like 10 like i mean 10 levels higher than the dungeon itself and he's getting his ass kicked a bit yeah i would say that the content holds a bit more merit behind it because of the difficulty from it you can't just call in your level 40 buddy all the time and just mop the floor with it <clears throat> right uh you know everyone still has to play that's the thing you still have to play um and that's good like that that adds a lot to it Right there, one of my effects got bugged, you can see, and then I cleaned it off. Huh. Yeah, you know, little bugs like that, uh, they go they go so bad for this game. I don't know why they do that. It's tons of little bugs. But nonetheless, um, there's no scaling in this game. Right. Okay. So once I hit level 25, which I already have, you know, it's time to go to the next zone. Right. Once you hit uh, level 40, I believe, is the next bracket, maybe maybe higher, you go to the next zone, and you just go up. Right. Kind of like World of Warcraft in that way. I know that I've been comparing it a lot to World of Warcraft, and I'm saying that is in the World of Warcraft I used to play yeah. uh, before all the crazy shit came in and the content got shit. So, you know, the older game itself, when it was good, Legion era, uh, you know, you just, you level up, and there's another checkpoint. So That's nuts. Yeah. You've hit two checkpoints in one dungeon. This dungeon's Great. really big. That's crazy. I mean, what do you think of the scale of it? I think it's good size. Like, I, I like it's, it's, it is, my brain is searching for a word and I can't come up with it right now. It's, um, it's good to see that, like, so this is one thing. Like, this whole video is one thing. Yeah. And it's roughly what an hour almost probably uh let me see yeah that's about an hour and 15 minutes or okay, so so and that's even with the wipes so remember that yeah but still like that's five minutes you know of the whole thing like you know i'd say if a dungeon takes you a, if a dungeon takes you 50 minutes to run it it's a pretty good sized dungeon yeah, it's it's really it's good to see that there are still games that do that like yes they weren't you know it wasn't it wasn't dungeons before or whatever it wasn't like instanced content but it was it was part of the game and it like you might spend 30 45 minutes an hour like get, trying to get through like one freaking part of the game and it would just be one building that you ran like you might be yeah. in a castle or something like that and you're trying to crawl through this thing and beat the boss in it it's always you know? funny to look back at those old games especially because i mean hell how many times you remember playing a game and uh you know you cleared one part of it and you thought that was like the whole game yeah like remember like you know the old playstation one two era games where you thought you fucking beat the game for a moment and then they were like, no, 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 you you beat Act 1. Yeah, like, freaking, oh, what was it, Breath of Fire 1 was like that. I remember and, God of War tricking me like that a little bit. I know that I know that sounds weird, but I was younger. I probably shouldn't have been playing the game. But I remember God of War being pretty big. I mean, it came on fucking three discs, I remember. I think it was three. Like, those games used to come on more than one disc. I think that shows our age a little bit. And even though I'm not that old, I still... You, you see that with, like... I think so, that... So, I think I'm mixed on that. Like, I think some of it might not be... It just might be that the data was too much to fit on one disc. Yeah. But... I, I think that was a lot of it. But I think it was also because, like... That was just how things were. Like Final Fantasy VII's <laughs> remake. 
you're not even at, at the end of like I all right so spoiler before I say this if you haven't played the game and you want to spoiler okay by the end of the first like installment of this remake you're not out of Midgard yet which is like by the end of disc one you're out of Midgard on the original yeah I mean there's a lot of games that when you play it you're like man when's the end and it's not that you're like not wanting to play the game it's like how far am I from beating it? Yeah. Like, that's like, the question sometimes. So. Some of those multiple disc games, I remember sitting and playing. Like, I would just forget what disc I was on until I got to the end of whatever was on that disc. And it would be like, all right, now put in disc two. And I'm like, fuck, I've been playing this game for like a hundred hours, you know. Yeah, and I'm not even through disc two. Like, what the fuck have I been doing right. with my life? I'm getting on the second disc right now. And you're looking Good. at it and you're like, oh, there's like six here. Yeah. Uh, Riven and Mist were stupid. Holy yeah. God, they were stupid. So this is our first wipe on the on the boss. I and mean, you've been looking at the mechanics here. He he's a fucking beast. This thing, this monstrosity like looking thing, he just charges. He they just charge right at you, and they don't give a fuck. Like this guy just rips through teams. He, like, I mean, look at him. He's smacking that dude, and I can't even get a heal off. I'm pretty sure before he ends up dying. Like he's getting hit. Yeah, there you go. He's down. And, yeah, I'm out of mana at this point because, like, I'm just fucking... I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Yeah. Like, I I, I forgot to actually pick him up. But I think it was because I was more worried about healing my team. Yeah. Like, I could have probably picked that guy up. Probably should have picked that guy up. But, god damn it, I was way too concerned. The healing I was doing was not enough. I end up having to switch. Yeah. I switch around my uh, talents, my skill points and stuff. And the reason for it being that... I mean, I don't know if I can heal this group. Like, I just genuinely didn't know if I could heal them. When it looks like everything going on, like some of the heals you're putting down, like you can't stand in it, you know? And it's not because you put it in a bad place, it's because, like, you can't stand still. Right, and that's a big part of it, is that I noticed that I wasn't able to, like, actually place the heal down. And that's why I started getting this... I started getting... I got a talent point later on, which makes my heals, when I hit the ground with, like, an orb... I heal. Yeah. Like, I just I just have to shoot my spells out and heal. Gotcha. And uh, I'm not even using abilities. And then the other one I grabbed was a group heal. So we've resurrected each other, like, I don't know how many fucking times now, right? And we're not even halfway through the boss. Yeah. And at this point, I think everyone was kind of, like, freaking out a little bit. You know, like, tensions get high when you've been really fucking with this shit. Uh, like it real high, yeah. Yeah, it, you know, when you're getting knocked down, picking everyone back up, as we just learned in March of Sacrifices. Like, this is where you start figuring out who's a toxic player and who's not. This is where you start figuring out if you really, really, really want to finish this dungeon. Yeah. Like, you, we've been doing great throughout all of this. And it all just ends quickly once, once one guy's down, you know, the second guy's not too far from it. And it just becomes a domino effect. Yeah. As soon as one guy's down, you either pick him up or start healing. And, and if you don't have mana and you're too far away from the other guy, you're good, your team's gone. Yeah. Once he dies, so I'm actually putting the heal on myself now. The reason for it is it increases my mana regen, which I felt like was a bit more important right now. Uh, I had to move anyway because, of course, I did. The guy fell on the ground and I needed to help, you know, fucking get this shit out of the way because he spawned more things. But it helps with my mana regen. And since I realized that I can't place it on them because they're going to have to move, I figured it would probably be better just to drop it at my feet so that I can heal more often. Right. And, uh, I mean, it was working okay. But once again, you know, we barely get to half health before this guy just starts murdering us. And... And I felt bad for this guy here. He just gets his ass kicked right here. Like, <laughs> here he goes. And I heal him. And bang. <laughs> and then I'm not even laughing at him. Because as soon as it happens, I get my ass kicked. I thought I was a badass because I could dodge roll. And, you know, I felt real good about it. I was like, aha, I can dodge roll your attacks. Nah. And then he runs at me, knocks yeah. me off my feet, and I'm dead. Yep. Yeah. He taught me a lesson right there. You can't dodge roll death. Mm -mm. Dodge rolls not enough. <clears throat> and now that the healer's down, you know, it's a reset. 
You know it's a reset. Healer goes down, it's a reset. Yeah. And uh, any kind of challenging content, it's a healer. If the if the utility people go down, you're done. Yeah, you can recover from a tank wipe. You cannot recover from a healer death. No. Not most of the time. That's where your sustain is for everybody. Like that's yeah. yeah. And and you can see right there. Uh, I I noticed real quick here. My weapon starts flashing red. That's scary to me. Uh, I need to repair my gear. Oh, okay. And so it lets you know. Yeah, uh, I repair my staff first, and then I realize I should probably go back in and repair some more things. My boots were almost broken. I noticed that the gear that's even in my bags breaks after this. Um, like, everything that was on me gets hurt. And it cost me a pretty good penny to actually do it. So, uh, yeah, just going on with it, right? Like, it's... This stuff right here, like, repairing. I use up so many of my repair parts. I had a ton of them right before we started this. But now I'm, you know, burning through gold, burning through repair kits. And it actually takes gold. Like, you actually have to pay money to repair your gear. As it probably, I guess, is some kind of investment in a way uh, to make gold more valuable. Because gold is... It, gold itself, like coins, in most games aren't valuable. You know, think of Elder Scrolls Online, think of Modern World of Warcraft, think of Final Fantasy. Like, typically, what they do is they have a new currency, right? And the new currency is all you use. You don't really give a shit about gold. Uh, you know, in ESO, like, gold matters a little bit more than most games of the same era, or the same, you know, type. But they don't matter that much when it comes to, like... 90% of things because you're gonna need gold for like what materials uh, Maybe some you know stem things here potions food. You don't really need gold in this game You do like gold is very important Not only is it worth like if you want to spend your alliance tokens to get gear the gear I'm wearing yeah. you actually have to also put up front a little bit of money and If you want to repair your gear, it also costs money and repair parts, which you only get from salvaging other parts, other weapons and stuff like that. Right. So like, the way the game works, and by the way, we're doing this dungeon right now with one of our guys disconnected. I don't know why we decided to do it. They tried to, they wanted to do it. Uh, I'm the healer, I'm gonna run with them, see what happens, but like, yeah, you can see here, we get wiped off. Um, but yeah, that's how it comes in, you know, it's like, gold is actually valuable here. It means more than what you think it does. Like, you can buy a house here. Uh, you know, taxes get collected on everything. Like, the whole the yeah. whole game is run off gold value. More than most MMOs nowadays. Because, you know, most MMOs just want to attach a new currency to the new items. Right. And, uh, you know... Like crowns and other, you know... Yeah, like, you know, you can also have the pay-to-win, you know, pay-to-win, or pay-to, you know, pay-money ones, but... Uh, there's the ones like Telvar Stones. Oh, yeah. Or, um, yeah. and I don't mind ESO's currency system. I like it, but their gold is kind of the secondary currency to everything. Yeah, it which, really is, because it's not like you don't go buy good gear with it. You don't, you know. No. What you do with gold is you save it up until you absolutely need it. And, yeah. then, and then you just buy what you need, which is typically food stuffs if you're not making it or maybe like crafty alfique for a new character you know uh by the way speaking of that i actually leveled up my sorcerer um you were here with me on it uh my sorcerer is now level 50 yeah which is kind of funny because i looked at it what was it 14 15 hours yeah to max level doing the dolmen farming yeah. uh by the way uh we're gonna link it shameless here uh shameless plug we're gonna link it um <laughs> But yeah, the it's effective. Like it was, you know, yeah. No, and it, right now they have the event going on, so like double experience. I mean, I'll say this: it's not exactly the most like tantalizing experience, no, but it's not. it does get you to max level it's quick. Grind. It is yeah. the quickest way to get to max level. It's not the uh, so grind is never the pretty part of a game. It's the part where you look at it and you're like you're mentally like. Fuck, I gotta do this. I like, mean, 15 fuck. hours to 50, though, that's really quick in comparison to a lot of other things. It is really quick, but it's like you're staying on it. For 15 hours, yeah. Yeah, you're not... 
I, I'm gonna call it 15 hours. I think it was more than that actually, but I was also spending time, you know, outfit station for a little right. bit. Well, I gotta look good when I'm killing demons, all right? Uh, yeah, so we go at it again. I don't know why they want to keep doing it. They keep doing it. Well, it looks like right here it's only four of y'all. It is. So that other guy completely disconnected. And uh, they're trying to give tips down there, like, or we get crushed, you know, like, all right, this thing's hard. Like, yeah, yeah, it's fucking hard, man. We're all here. Like, we're all really struggling here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why they keep going with it. You know, but I get it. Like, you just want to try and see if you can do it. Because we got far right. with five people. And One. it only requires three technically, so I can see why you're like, let's push it and see what we can do. Yeah, well, you've done it a couple of times. You're like, all right, you know, you've learned something from it. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely been able to kill the boss down quicker every time. Uh, but still, I mean, now we're down a person. We're getting our ass kind of just beat now. Yeah. And of course, these guys here, these fucking zombie guys that come out after you. Oh, man. Like, if you're the healer or anyone trying to resurrect anyone, they will stop you right in your tracks. You gotta get rid of the ads, man. You have to. You have to. Don't even remind me. <laughs> Look, you guys might not know, but that's part of the Mar March situation, was that we had ads and their priority. And, uh... For anybody who cares, we will eventually show that, yeah. Yeah, look, I don't really enjoy it. I don't really enjoy March sacrifices all that much. But I need Balrog set, so fuck yeah, you. Yeah, right. You know, like, that's kind of part of it, though. Like, you know. You do. You want the good stuff, you gotta do the hard stuff. That's, like it's, that's where it, you know. I don't like March of Sacrifices in the slightest, but I'm alright with it because I need the gear, so I'm gonna have to do it. That's right. That's where it's at. So you can see here, I actually do have a heal. Like, whenever I hit something. Uh, I believe I've already done the respec. No, I haven't yet. I have not respec yet. I've just, I guess I'm just an idiot shooting things. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to do damage, I guess. I, I kind of get it. Like, we're kind of low on damage right now. We're missing right. an extra yeah, guy. we're missing it's... a whole player. Like... Right. So after this wipe here, which is inevitable, I'm sorry to spoil it, we end up dying. Uh, we end up pulling in the other guy uh, that they know. I don't know him, uh, but they do. So, yeah. you know. That's all that matters. Yeah, like, that's part of an MMO, though, is getting to know people. Yeah. You need to know people. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're real-life friends or not. Like, whoever plays with you, you need to know more people. Yeah. The bigger your net, you know yes. what I mean? And that works in business, and it works in video games, and this guy's about to get squashed. I put a uh, heal down, and he's dead. Uh, yeah, and then I was an idiot who was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run up to the boss and try to res him, and the yeah. boss was like, no, you look good. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Look, he, he really, really wanted to touch my dress that I'm wearing, and I don't know that that got weird. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, he was. Uh, well, like, all right. Look, I'm wearing a dress. Let's just admit it. I'm wearing a I'm wearing a blue dress, and I don't understand why. I'm gonna sing the song for a minute, but I'm you know oh, the big God. blue dress. You know, look, alright, I'm not gonna sing it, fine. If you guys wanna look it up, look it up. A big blue dress, wow song from forever ago. It's fucking hilarious, but I really am. I'm wearing a goddamn dress. And that's the that's the light armor. And the medium armor looks like way cooler. <laughs> it looks way cooler, but you don't get a you won't get you get less damage and you get less dodge ability. Bad situation. So, you know, I took my fucking, I took my chances with the skirt. Alright? So the light armor is where the damage comes from in this game. Mm-hmm. Lighter your armor, the more damage you do. Oh. It's a pretty rudimentary system with it, but it also makes sense, like... Alright, so is this the respec? Yes. Here's where I respec. I also want to say, um, you can actually get these little token things that actually make light armor, your, your, uh, faction's armor. You yeah. can reset your stats on it. So, like, light armor comes standard with intellect and, and focus. Yeah. You can put dexterity on it. And you just have to buy one of those tokens, take it to an outfitting station, and do it. Huh. Yeah. I don't know if it works with all gear, but I know it works with the gear that you get there. Yeah, so, you know what, I actually... So, part of 
that can you play solo in like new world thing they were talking about I guess does gear have like its own like maybe not in a set trait kind of way but like does gear come with its own thing or like stat boost or whatever so gear comes with its own like you know health intellect like or constitution intellect strength dexterity stuff like that they also have traits on them mm -hmm. so some gear pieces have traits which is a whole different system than eso i really think it is because um i play I like mean, you get you get set bonuses in eso yeah but here you have traits. Each piece right. is its own set. So you might get like plus 10 to some stat or something. Right, but the traits are typically a little bit more different. So like a rapier can have a can have something on it that does it gives your spin whatever attack, I don't remember the name of it, extra damage. Right. Or you can have a life staff that I don't know, uh, I don't remember all of them, but you know, you can have a life staff that does extra healing, like 18 yeah, that's what it is. 18% extra healing on a life staff. Or whatever. Like, you can have whatever you want on them, and, and that's kind of part of it. So, each gear piece has its own set of what traits, or what um, trait passives can be on it. So, a chess piece can't have all the ones that a ring would have, but a ring has, like, a fucking huge list, and a chess piece has a huge list, and all this stuff. So, you can really mix and match to your heart's content, even though you might not be able to get all of the same ones on every piece right. you can mix and match them to make them all different so that's actually the reason um i was bringing that up because there i can't remember where exactly now i saw it but apparently they have played this played you know fairly in-depthly um or oh, it, to a fairly in-depth like extent i think they were in beta and stuff like like talk yeah. the way they were discussing their experience with the game it sounded like they'd been in the beta and stuff like that they're they were talking about like you might you know if you play solo you might just have to deal with you pulled a piece of gear that didn't have like the right thing on it or the thing you wanted on it like you might just have to deal with that but if, but the way they made it sound is you can farm to get you know yeah like so you might pull the same piece over they, and over again they have a few different ways of doing that so every boss over overland boss like at the end of a dungeon, or not a dungeon, but at the end of like a cave, there will be a boss. Right. And they'll have a chest behind them. And the boss always drops like three pieces. Yeah. But those three pieces have a level set to them, which means that like if you out level it, it's not good for you. But they like have three items and they have traits that can come on them. So like everywhere in the game, you can essentially farm the places you want for the things you want. Yeah. The only issue is. I mean, you know how it goes. You know, harder content, better gear. Yes. So, with harder content comes more people. Right. And then that's... Especially that's... in what it looks like from here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a whole lot of people that play this game, though. I've noticed that. Like, there's no sub-fee. And it's $40. Um, which is a buy-in price. You know what I mean? That's, that's kind of how ESO works, but they have a sub as well. Which is kind of mandatory if you really want to play they have a cosmetic store in this game. The thing is, though, I don't know how they plan to monetize this further. Right. I mean, I expect they'll probably roll in a sub. I expect that. The reason for it is that that's just standard across MMOs. It makes things simpler for the player and the, and the you know, yeah. the higher-ups. They get more money. You get a better, experience, a better experience. You get better content. You get better, you know. You get more content, more things rolling in, because more money means more things, and and while that also can be bad for the for the game itself, uh, MMOs typically can rely on a sub fee. Yeah, it's it's so widespread right now that and like I say that from a position where I don't disagree with it. Right. There are aspects of many subs that I do disagree with, like. If it's something that should exist in the world, it shouldn't be a part. Like, it shouldn't be extra, right? Like, it should just exist in the world. Yeah, it now, should. That being said, like, I'm not saying, you know, DLC is not a thing or whatever. But, well, like, you know, we play Elder Scrolls Online, we pay a sub fee, and we disagree with the store pretty right. heavily. But, you know, the thing is with the store is that it's mostly just cosmetics, even though there is some fucking real stupid shit. 
there is mostly just cosmetics. I'm not going to throw a big fit about it. But with this game, with no sub, yeah, I don't know. Because if they, they don't have a sub, they can push that boundary more and more uh, than like ESO can. Like ESO can't push it to like an insane degree. They can't say we're gonna literally give you like a level fifty character like e like WoW did. Right. Like if they did that, people would quit. People would have an issue with it. People would you know. And since they're not the biggest MMO, they can't do that. But that's part of it. Is like you know this game doesn't have a sub feed. Right. And it's trying to take on the big ones, and it's succeeding pretty far so far. Like as of as of right now, it's succeeding. Yeah, I've, everything I've seen, it's. Everybody is saying that it is definitely doing a decent job securing a seat among the top, like, tier played games. Like, as far as, like, player base goes. I think what happened, and this is really what I think, like, genuinely, and there's a bit of a skepticism, right? But think about it this way. WoW collapsed. And almost everyone played WoW. Like, before it collapsed. Almost everyone who was playing MMOs played WoW. Yeah. There were a few outliers, you know, people playing Final Fantasy, but maybe, you know, and some people playing ESO, but those games weren't big. They were not even slightly to the degree of WoW. WoW collapses. There are now, there were two MMOs, and now there are three. And I think what we're looking at, realistically, I think we're looking at a resurgence. Of the same situation that we had when RuneScape came out. Or not RuneScape, uh, EverQuest happened when WoW came out. Yeah. See, what I'm thinking is, realistically, because we had Ultima Online, we had RuneScape, we had EverQuest, we had a you know, few big MMOs. They're yeah. somewhat big. I mean, at the time, gaming wasn't so massive as it is now. But, you know, we had a pretty good, stable play player base on each of them. Yeah. And then WoW came in. And WoW took over. And WoW became the biggest MMO, even though it was actually considered casual at the time. Right. Which it was hard as fuck at the time. Like, if you think about it in context with today's gaming, that was a fucking hardcore game. But it was casual for the time. That's, yeah, I was gonna say, that's... That's what games were then. Like, and, and I gotta stop for a second. Like, are you guys waiting on the other... Okay. Here he is. He is. Right. He there. That's what I was curious about. I was right. like, "What are they doing?" But yeah, I, no, you know, we're it just makes kinda... sense. Like, I've had to run through a dungeon and catch up with the party before. Right. So. But you know, I think what we're looking at here, realistically, one of these games is going to take the crown, and it's not going to be WoW. No, I don't. Like, all right, I don't know. I quit. I quit playing for a little bit, but. Yeah. It very much seems like people are starting to, because like you got Elden Ring coming out, you have you know, I've seen the a lot of stuff Fantasy on the Soulborn back. series. Like yeah, you've got the. There's a. And these are difficult games, and there's a lot of like attention a, on them right now. There's a call for high fantasy. There is. There's a call. Well, it's high fantasy. It's like I would argue that WoW was high fantasy. Uh, it, yeah, somewhat. Well, uh, like, you got Space Ghosts. That's high fantasy. But, like, here's the thing. Like, it's not just Skyrim gameplay anymore. Like, there are people are talking about... Like, I re like I just saw a whole thing yesterday on, like, the Soulsborne series. Like... Yeah, gameplay itself is now coming into a lot of scrutiny. Like, you really have to think about it now. Uh, games themselves need to become more than what they were before. You know, MMOs can't just continue to be tab target anymore. They have to grow with the community. Yeah, and it's, well, and even, like, the way the content sets in the game, like, I have not played this game, so when we talk about this, I'm, I'm doing it from an outside perspective, but, like, looking at it, it feels a lot like RuneScape, and, like, RuneScape wasn't a... You could casually play it, but, like, you wouldn't get shit done. Like, It even looks a lot... We were kind of talking about that with ESO the other day. Like, you can casually play that, but, like, yeah. if you don't make a plan, you're going to do a whole bunch of shit and not actually do anything. Like, Right. I think the thing about it, the thing that really, really gets me is it, it almost has... And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for saying this, but it almost has a, a Lord of the Rings vibe. It's... it's it almost. It looks... There's something about the architecture. It looks like an advanced 
it, it's it's a modern day take from what I see of it. Now, I may feel differently when I play it, but it looks like a modern day take on older games. Like yes. the, the concepts in them, not like any one in particular, but... No, I agree. I fully agree with it because it really does look like that. It looks like they've really done their homework on what MMO guys, like, you know, the older audience wants. Well, they this, did their homework. Another thing, too, I guess you could look at it from this perspective. This did come from Amazon, so, like, I'm going to guess it's not... They're not just, like, solely employing, like, people that just came out of, like, college for, you know, game development. And yeah, whatnot. they got the money to hire some big names, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, like, Amazon owns half the planet, so... Yeah, like, yeah. I say that jokingly, but, like, it's not a small company, so... No, and they have more revenue than just video games. Yeah, and they've been... So that's another thing. They've been around for a long <laughs> time, right? Like... Yeah. They didn't build their name in in gaming like many did, and on the backs of these more difficult games. So you guys killed the boss. We have, and actually, I got a ring for it. I didn't show it in the clip here, but the ring has a fuck ton of strength on it. Nice. It's it's a big upgrade for anyone who needs something like that. But I uh, I don't use strength, but I'm gonna wear it because it's kind of a badge of honor for me. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little proud of it. Uh, I feel proud of it because we got them done. You know, but really, what I'm getting at with it, you know, the whole thing with it is that there is a place for all three of them, I believe. And I think only one's really going to take the crown. And you know what? I, you want to place a guess? I, I don't think it'll be this one. I think it'll be Final Fantasy. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not saying that this game doesn't look good, but, like, a lack of story is bad for a game. Yeah. Yeah, New World's got a lot to catch up with. See, you gotta think about it. The clip's ended now, so we're gonna probably just put some of them up yeah. here. And, uh, but, you know, out of all of it, you know, with, when it comes to it, is that we have we have ESO, Final Fantasy, and now we have New World. Right. I know WoW's still in the kicking right now. It's still, it's still there, but it's being kicked away quickly. Like, people are really all right with leaving WoW now. Yeah, I mean, major content creators that only did that game, like, just left it, you know? And like, uh, there are a few. There are still a few content creators that make content around it, but even still, the game itself... You have somebody that's willing to leave like that, though, that built on yes. that game, and they built on it, and, like, that's why they exist and are known. Like, as like, Gold. Fuck this game, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, exactly. Asmongold, Bellular even. Bellular has been doing Final Fantasy now. Who is one of the biggest WoW people. And he, he still makes WoW content. I know that. And But a lot of his content's really fuck WoW. Yeah. And I get it. I get it. As a person who played WoW. Like, WoW was an abusive relationship at best. <laughs> and, uh, and now I'm just like, I'm free. So I feel better about it. Yeah. But like, you know, it's kind of scary to think about it. Because... And not because I, like, miss WoW, but because we're in a weird place for MMOs. Yeah. We're in a, we're in a bit of a tug-of-war. Uh, a lot of companies are trying their damnedest right now to just get people. Yeah. They want, they want numbers. They want, that's it, right now. But the way they're going to get it is not through doing WoW shit. They're going to no. get it by... Offering us better prices, better things, more content, doing this... And that's they know that Making because that's how WoW better. fell. Like some of the stuff that's coming with update thirty two of ESO is like I wouldn't I wouldn't picture it in an Elder Scrolls game. Now that being said, it's not so much that I like some of it when I read it like the armory like thing. That's I was like, very oh, wow, different. I real like I'm real disagreeable to this. And here's why because like put time into your character. But I yeah now that I understand more about how it exactly works. All right, like I'm good with it. I'm probably going to use it. It works more for you got to think about it as an MMO thing. And more cuz you know, Elder Scrolls Online isn't an Elder Scrolls game inherently. No, it's not. But and and I understand, but like even in the world of MMOs, like I disagree with it. Yeah. The idea because well, like your DPS yeah. shouldn't also be a healer. Multi-specking's been a thing for MMOs for a while. I know that you also said yourself you just been out of it for a yeah, while. I, I would have probably disagreed with it even when it showed up. Now. Yeah, most people did. I remember 
hearing a lot of people saying uh, dual spec and wow like that was like a big cut for a while like people didn't like it um you know final fantasy the job system like that's you know how it is you could play every class on one character you, you got a lot of like classes a lot of games are just trying to open doors like they're not they're not trying to revamp the content they're trying to revamp the ease of ability to swap it yeah, and I don't like that. I feel like that goes into that accessibility and they got it fucked up, like the definition of it fucked up. I think accessibility, I think I personally disagree with you on it a little bit. Then again, that's right, also so coming from an MMO you guy. You play a DPS. Yeah. Okay, so somebody like, I play a tank, I should just be able to turn my tank into what you got? Because I mean, I think you spent time doing that. I right? think being able to, I, I really dislike that they're selling a thing that lets you do it anywhere like that seems like the big issue with it for me i would i'm okay with it if you do it in town i think that'd be fine i mean like and here's why so people really disliked when wow brought in these tomes where they were were tomes of clear mind you'd click them and you could change your talents anywhere or you could only change them in town mm -hmm. and people disliked that because before you could just change them anytime you weren't in combat right which meant that your class was all three specs and all the things anywhere and people didn't like it because it was friction there was a lot of friction within it like you couldn't just go to town and right. do it like that was a trip you right. couldn't just you know it was it made shit like it, the way they implemented it gelled wrong right. that's what it was it wasn't necessarily that they did it wrong it was that they gelled it wrong i'm okay with it because i like the idea of being able to your character can do two things i don't like that you can buy more but i your character can do two things i think but Boy, having the limit of going home for it makes right. sense to me that makes more sense than being able to do it on the fly because you should have to go home to do it if you want to it's essentially a way to respect your character but prepare it for the respect before and it saves you money and it saves you a bit of time if you set it up now i like it i think it's a good system i think though there is a conflicting issue with it which means that well we're all gonna have to carry around two fucking armor sets now right that's the issue yeah that was one of the i don't want to say this incorrectly but i think that was one of the things that, that upset me about it to begin with is I'm like, what are you talking about? You can just save a set of armor on a character that you're not, like, carrying around. Yeah. Like, no, you have to carry the fuck. fucking armor around. Like, yeah. that's a whole extra set to carry around. That I feels like a that bug. makes sense, though. Like, it if does. you want to play a bunch of different shit, like, don't Skyrim this motherfucker. I think it would like, just be better if you just put it in shit. the chest itself, though. The, the, the thing is, it should just carry it. And that way, you're not carrying it, but... That armor is kind of locked away for a minute. Yeah, well, and so, all right. So the way that it, the way that I understood it when I first heard it, I was like, so you're gonna like just digitally store this in a world of fantasy, like yeah, you know, digitally store some plate mail for when you want to tank later. That doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. What does make sense though is like. Either you carry it or you have to, like, but you have to have it, right? I'll like, say it has to be somewhere. I'll say it does add one good thing. And one really, really good thing is that now, if you're a raider mm -hmm. or, you know, you have a group that you do dungeons with or whatever, what you can do now is say you're the tank, which you are the tank most of the time. So if you're the tank, well, you're not doing a lot of damage when you want to go solo for a little while. Right. So you can go back home, reset your yeah, thing, no, play around like that, yes. and then when you got a tank, you just go home and go, "Hey guys, I gotta go home real quick. Respect." Right. Yeah. No, I don't disagree. Like, like I was saying, I don't like now that it's explained a little bit more, or now that I've read a little bit more on it, I don't necessarily disagree. I, with I think it's gonna cause conflictions within guilds. I think it will. Yeah. I I think a lot of people are gonna be like, "Hey, I'm trying out my new spec," and then well, it's, it's, it's play style too, right? Like, yeah. You're That's changing your whole character. It's when you play like, like fundamentally as a tank, I don't play the same way that like a DPS or a healer. Does. I really feel, I know they want to sell more shit, yeah. but I really feel like two specs is fine. Yeah, I'm okay with two. Like yeah. I, I don't like the system in, in a lot, 
but I think it's something standard within MMOs. Right. And I think that if since it's standard, it, it's okay. But I don't like that it's like I, you can buy more, and then yeah. you can buy a guy to come fall. Like there's two things that you can buy coming right out of the gate of it. Yeah. And it's like, why would I? Why is that? That doesn't sound right to me. It doesn't seem right that like as soon as the new system comes out, there are there's one new system and two ways to purchase things for it. Yeah. It's more microtransactions is what it is. Like, yeah, that's what makes it slimy about it. But looking at the uh, Imperial race today, seeing like bare minimum you have to pay eighteen dollars for a race that exists in the game. Yep. Like already exists. Yeah. You know? Look, the Imperial race needs to be wrapped in. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think though, if we think about it, right? Final Fantasy and, and New World are probably they're looking to become the new big two, which means that if Elder Scrolls Online wants to capitalize on what's going on right now, this big shift, mm -hmm. they just need to just do that. They just need to give they need to give the Imperial race back it. Just put it in the game. Like just make they're, it a part of it. Well, like that. All right. So so I said Imperial race because that was the thing I was looking. Like, it's not the only thing. No, Vampire and, Bites are there. Yeah, Vampire Bites, Skill Lines, Guys You know, it's funny. Like I've that. never like, I've never once paid a single gold for Vampire or Werewolf Bites. And I mean, you should. Because I've just... I don't think you should. I just walked into the zone and said, Hey, uh, anyone care to bite my character? Right, because like, then people, right? Yeah. Like, fucking talk to the other people playing the game. It's an MMO, but being a degenerate, sitting in the corner, like, yeah. shady shit in the darkness. Whenever I got so, my Werewolf Bite... The guy I talked to about it, I was like, hey, like, before I even did it, I was like, hey, do you care if I ask a couple questions about it first? Right. Like, I j was just sitting there talking to him about what it means to be a werewolf first. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I think I'm ready to do it. And then he bit me, I went in, I became a werewolf. Right. Like, I think, I think there's a place for all three of these games, because I think all three of these games cater to a different set of people. Yes. In some way. They do. I think, I haven't played... I'm more likely to play Final Fantasy before I play this game because of the drag on the graphics and stuff that I see in this game. Like, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, they really, like, realistically, what I think needs to happen, if all three of these competitors, like, there's a few things that could just make these games better. One, I think Elder Scrolls Online needs to wrap the Imperial Race in. They need to offer more with their sub. Like, cause their sub is good, but they need to offer more with it. Yeah. And then for New World, they need to fix the optimization, the bugs, and probably just generally work on the servers. Yeah. And for Final Fantasy, even though I haven't played it very much, I think a revamp of the of the beginning is probably in order. So, uh, that's from a long time ago, and I don't really like it. And everyone always says fifty levels of garbage before you get to the stuff. Yeah, and that's that's those that's kind of those games. Like, it is, but that's. That's a bad mark on the game straight away. It is to people that it doesn't cater to. That's uh, yeah. why I say that though. Like and so A little bit. Yeah, I get what you're saying. New World has a new I saw where New World <laughs> got a got a patch or something coming. Um Final Fantasy has an update coming. They have an expansion coming. Yeah. And this and then uh ESO also has one coming. So all three of these games have something, you know, get ready to change about them. But. Well, they're trying to roll out content as quick as possible to compete. Right and now is the time to gather people from WoW. Part of, part of New World's thing, too. Like, so they're catching some heat because... So people made characters, like, in a real hurried fashion so they wouldn't have to wait the queue times yep. on servers they didn't want to be on. Yeah. Right? Their friends aren't there and they were supposed to be some kind of, like... Yeah, the way um, to transfer. Well, you can't. The British or English servers came yeah, up first, yeah. and then you got North American guys slogging on. So yeah. they've come out now and said, "So like, if you're in North America, we're going to be able to do that, or if you're in Europe, we're going to be able to do that. But like, you're not going to be able to go from North America to Europe because like, or the other way around." Like region, you're not going to be able to do a region yeah. transfer. You're going to be able to do in the region transfer. Well, it like don't. You made half the game come up. Yeah. It, well, you, mean you can't just take this data and plug it in somewhere else. I think it only it the only reason they're doing it is because they fucked up the launch. Like they fucked up the launch and now it's damage control. 
Well, they come out in the beginning and said, hey, we're going to do this. Now they, they're starting, the reason they're catching heat is because they're back. They've had to backtrack or they've either had to or just decided they were going to. I don't know which one it is. I've read it and I was like, all right, that's kind of shitty. Like if I read, if I was playing this game and I was like, all right, I'm going to be able to move my character later. So I'm just going to make them. Yeah, play now. And now find out I got to start over, you know. It's, it's a... New World's server issues, like, on the technical side, mm -hmm. just in general, the technical side of the game, it's not there. It's not. Uh, you can't lie about it. Like, if you're, if you're someone who likes the game, I enjoy the game. I play the game a lot. I really, really, really like this game. I cannot look at it blindly and say, Ah, oh, no, it's fine, it's fine. Dude, it's fucking popping high-end graphics cards. And yeah. doesn't even work server-wise. The queues are fucking long because the server population was capped at 2,000 people. Yeah. And they launched it half of the fucking world first and the other half at the same the next day. And then, like, dude, no, they just they just didn't know what they were doing. They didn't do that. That's where they didn't do their homework. Right. They did their homework on the content. But they didn't realize that there's been 20 years of this shit happened to WoW. <laughs> like, WoW fucking suffered every expansion pack because it, with the same shit. Yeah. And they didn't go and be like, well, what's hap what happened to the big MMOs? Right. What what was their issues? Let me look at it. You know, they like, bring their clipboard up, and they're flipping through it. And then they get about halfway through, and they're like, eh, whatever. Just fucking launch it. Just yeah. click, the, click the red button. And it just happened. I don't think, I don't know what happened. Like, dude, they're fucking Amazon. They're Amazon. You're telling me Amazon couldn't give an extra server or two? Like, come on. Don't lie to me. New servers should be able to hold, like, 50,000 people. I'm not being, I'm exaggerating. But, like, it's Amazon. Yeah. How the fuck can Amazon fuck it up? Like, this is, this is literally what they're built off of. It's internet service. Yeah. This is so, what they've been doing. <laughs> so, like, the fact that this game is entirely DirectX 12 forward is also... It's groundbreaking. I'll it's, say that. It's a bit worrisome to me because I'm like... It's not done yet? No, it's not done yet. <laughs> it just came, DirectX 12 just came out. And, like, I've seen, like, decision makers for other, <coughs> other games that exist already talking about, like, we're not porting over right now. It's not going to happen, you know, because no. we might break the whole fucking game if we do that. Like, well, it's a bad that, idea. It's a bad idea to jump on new tech just because it's new. Right. Well, like, and then you got New yeah. World comes out. It's built on it, and it's blowing up graphics cards. And like I just saw, it. I didn't go into it and read it because of I don't know time or something. But Jay's two cents actually. His graphics card. It's himself. He's a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay's two cents. He builds computers, and he's also builds cars. I like his channel in general. Uh, but him specifically, his thirty ninety. Yeah. Which is like a thousand five hundred bucks yeah. graphics card blew up because of New World. Yeah. Like it ex like the card itself just went boop. Yeah. It's like, dude, that's not good. <laughs> I you can't look at, like if you look at this game and you're like, ah, well, I mean it works. It's like, dude, look, we're in a graphics card shortage. Alright? We're in a graphics card shortage, we're in a chip shortage right now. Yeah. We're like I mean look, I know like let's not get political about it, but we're like still recovering from COVID. All the shit right now is like fucked up. And yeah, this game comes out, and it's just gonna put fucking financial strain on you if you yeah. got some nice shit. <laughs> you got nice shit? Fuck you. Like, I don't know, man. I don't even have nice shit. And that would piss me off. Yeah. Like, if I spent my last $3 that I own in my wallet on something nice, I would be kind of pissed off. Hell yeah. And, uh, you know, look. This game is fun. It's addictively fun. It's old style MMO wrapped in just shit. Like, and I think, like, you know what? It feels like maybe, maybe they went too far on the old school part and they're still using 1995 servers. Maybe that's the issue. <laughs> you know, they were like, well, we need to give them the real feeling of RuneScape back in the day. So we're going to make shit bad uh, yeah, because computers fit, weren't there yet. We could fit 500 people in a world or whatever it was. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's cool. 500 people. I think that's... I, I legitimately, if I like... Like, I, I'm going to probably go and look it up just because I'm talking about it now. But, like, 
I, it was like no, no, it was not even a thousand people. Like no, and that was in a world, and that was like something big too. Yeah, like you were like, oh, dude, like, five hundred people. people, dude, I can interact with five hundred people. Yeah, and it's like, look, man, we're in, we're in twenty twenty one, about to be twenty twenty two, and like, they, oh, so all right, so here's the other thing, like five hundred people was a busy ass world to be in. Like, yeah. you did not want to be in that world. You no, do shit. No, because the world map was, like, actually managed by the people. Yeah. So if there were too many of them, you were part of the issue. Yeah. And so, like, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things where, like, 2,000 people isn't a lot of people. It's been bumped up to 2,500. I say that. I say that, like, but then again, it is a good amount of people. It's a fuck ton of people. But not for an MMO. Right. Not for an MMO. Like... If you had a thousand people who watched your channel, shout out to us. Thank you, everybody. Um, you know, then you'd be pretty proud of it, like we are. But if you have two thousand people who are playing the game you're playing, it's like, look, think about it. Yeah. They're like, if you bought a game and you found out only two thousand people you'd interact with, you'd be like, there's only two thousand people. Yeah. Like nowadays, like you know. Like two thousand. So. Was two? It's two, it's 2,500 at a time, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. That means that you have the potential to interact with only 2,500 people, whereas in, I mean, let's just say, as in World of Warcraft, I mean, fuck, you can get like 5,000 people. Yeah. Like, that's a game from 2005. Mm -hmm. So you tell me how a game from 2005 can hold double the amount you can, and then we'll talk about a new world. I don't know if maybe... <clears throat> I guess it's possible it's probably got something to do with like you know how different the game looks and everything but it, it's uh, I'm not tech savvy on, on that end of things it probably has know. something to do with how graphically good it looks as well I mean they really put a lot of effort in the graphics and stuff like that and I think that I think that deterred away from a lot of other resources as much as I like the way the game looks the graphics department can't be all you hire. No. You know, it's like not... Companies don't just have idea guys. Right. You gotta have people in the back end who server code all this shit. And make sure that, you know, it works. And uh, I think they put a little too many people on the art department, which is never a bad thing. Like, the art department in games is where the things come to life. Yeah. But... But... Right, like, it needs to work. Like, look, the art department can make a beautiful rock, but if that rock starts floating, we got an issue. You got a nice rock. It's a nice yeah. Boulder. Right. And, you know, that's like oblivion where, like, trees, you know what I mean? Like, trees... Oh, my God, what is it? It's like some uh, mod had come in, and, and it was called the unofficial uh, patch. Yeah. And they fixed, like, every fucking bug in the game. Yeah. Like, every one of them. And they went through it, and it's like... 400, 500 trees that were floating. And it's like, oh my god, Bethesda, you just didn't give a shit. Like, you got, you guys went through the R&D department every day. Yeah. And you were like, hey guys, what do we do here? And they were like, uh... Nobody notices, just let them float. Look, if it, is it noticeable? No? Well, kind of. Put boulders around it. Like, they would do that. Like, that's a real thing. Like, if you see, you see trees with boulders around them, and if you just move the boulder the tree's like <laughs> it's like up just a little bit they were oh my god and like clipping issues like this game is running off oblivion shit and i just i want everyone to know that because like i've had shit that just doesn't work the graphics sometimes bug out like the thing just bugs out yeah. in general and like sometimes i worry about it a little much because like you ever been playing an online game and you get a bug that like f seems like a glitch and you worry you're gonna get banned. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not your fault that the game broke, but you just feel it. Like you're like that. That's something to be banned over. Like someone's gonna read that out on a computer prompt. It's gonna look bad. Yeah. But I'm not doing anything wrong. The game broke. Yeah. It's not my fault. I'm underneath the city. Yeah. Like I didn't mean to be. <laughs> like I. Uh, that's this game feels like real loose and fast with technical issues. And it's, that's yeah. not where you want to be. You want that shit tightened up. Snake. Man, don't talk... Look, you want to talk about snake bits? No. 
I think we're good. Yeah. We've learned, so here we are, guys. We've uh, talked about the dungeon, uh, barely, but we did a dungeon review thing. We mostly talked about MMOs. Uh, this is our channel where we sometimes maybe talk about video games and mostly just talk about Morrowind. Um, you know, thank you <laughs> yeah. all for watching. <laughs> Uh, most the, mostly, if you really, really like this content, you know, subscribe because Morrow and stuff will come up eventually. <laughs> uh, if you're a big fan of Final Fantasy, Jack will probably say something about it at some point in the next video. And and I I know I'll probably talk about Oblivion some more. And you know, yeah. to everyone, you know, just remember fuck Skyrim and you know, thank y'all for watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that pretty much sums that. <laughs> That's our channel right there. Yeah. Our entire channel is we sometimes talk about video games, mostly <laughs> Morrowind, and sometimes Final Fantasy when Jack gets on about it. <laughs> there you go. I'll see y'all later. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you really like Morrowind. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, and Snake Bits. Yeah. Snake Bits. We'll tell you about it some other time, maybe. But snake boots.